We're going to continue today with a more thorough exploration of 3ds Max materials. So I've brought in a scene once again which is very simple and it's going to serve as basically a materials testing lab. I'm going to go into the material editor Just to show you, I've applied a few materials already in the scene. Here, a material for the walls, something for the floor, something for the ceiling, and also these, these posts that are, this element here, going to become a chain link fence. I'm going to look at the floor material first. So I'm going to go ahead and render my view just so you see what we have without making any adjustments to what I've already applied to the scene so far. So here are the materials I have in my scene so far. The wall material is just a very plain matte material. These two surfaces here do not have any materials on them yet. And these poles here have a brushed metal material. The floor here has a reflective material on it. What I'd like to do is to show how you would prepare this material to start designing a custom tile material. And then we'll come back to that a little bit later on and, and finish it off. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a bump mat to that tile. Now I'm going to use the arch and design material a lot. And essentially, everything that we do here, you can also find in the Pro Material generic. So I'm going to go into bump map here, click where it says none. Click on bitmap. In the startup files that I provided, I have a little bump map or a little tile pattern. And let's just look at that. It's just a very simple tile. And you can see it has a, a black line, a gray line, and then all white. So if I apply that as a bump map to my surface, now that material is already applied to the surface. And let me just double check something here. The real world scale. Let's say that tile is 15 centimeters. And what we'll need to do is also apply to the floor object a UVW map, which also has real world map size. So let's go ahead and re render this. This time, let's just render a region, and we'll choose to place our region so that we pick up most of the floor and especially this area here which is getting a little bit of a highlight from a light which is placed just over these objects. I'm going to also turn off soft shadows so to further accelerate our rendering for the time being. Now you can start to see in this area here, a bit of a pattern emerge in the floor, and that's caused exclusively by this bump map. Now, it's not very strong, so what we need to do is go back to the bump map here and just increase its strength. And render again. 
we can see a more definitive pattern now in the floor. Now another thing that we can do at this point is we can also use a reflection map. In a tile floor where you would have, let's say, granite tiles or ceramic tiles, and then some sort of grouting in between, typically the grouting is not going to be reflective. Currently, we have a bump map on a reflective surface. So we can go into this material, find here the reflection area, and click on this map button and go and get that same bitmap once again. We could have also have copied it from our bump map, which is which would have been a little bit shorter because here I have to now re-specify the size of my tiles. Let's go ahead and render that again. So you can start to see here in this area that there is that pattern that is no longer reflective and this better defines our tiles to start with. And like I said, I'm going to come back to this a little bit later when we want to actually create the different materials for the grout and for the tile itself.